this is going to be a deep dive into Zebra Reform's performance, but I only have 30 minutes, so it's just going to be an overview of Zebra Reform's performance. <laughs> yeah, an overview of the deep dive, okay. 35 minutes, come on. Alright, so I'm going to go over the agenda. The agenda's actually kind of changed now, so I'm going to go over the misconceptions <laughs> and truths. <laughs> It's going to be really quick, so I may as well just skip this. So I'm just going to give you some quick tips. Um, I'm not going to talk about the layout system, but I'll give you a link where you can actually watch the same uh, or similar session that I've already done before. Um, I'm not going to talk about pages, layouts, and controls, uh, but I am going to talk a lot about animations in Xamarin Forms, uh, going with the animations theme. Um, with bananas. Button? With, with bananas. Uh, well, I can put bananas in. Give me a couple of days, and I'll, I'll rebuild your application Excellent. in Xamarin Forms. Um, so is Xamarin Reform slow? A lot of people are still asking this question. Um, so that's what they found on Reddit. A lot of people have sort of said that on Reddit, um, which is not entirely true. Some people that you uh, see uh, writing stuff on Reddit, you shouldn't really listen to them. Um, <coughs> because <laughs> really they, uh, they might come to Xamarin and they'll come to Xamarin Forms and they'll think, oh, this is so easy to get started. Um, and they really expect it to be easier um, than it actually is. Um, but it, that's just mobile for you. So if you want to build a mobile app, it's not going to be easy. You can't just come in um, and in a day sort of build an app. You, there's always a learning curve. If you wanted to do it in Swift, if you want to do it in Android, no matter what you do, um, th it's still going to be hard. And I think people just think it's going to be really easy and really simple. Um, that's not that Xamarin Forms is not good. Xamarin Forms is probably better than every other option that we have. Um, it's just that people um, think it's going to be easier than it is. Um, so. Past experiences, so some people might have uh, said things a couple of years ago and that, those, um, those uh, comments are still out there, but it's actually 10 times faster uh, than the 1.0 days. Um, it's slow and fast, uh, meaning that there's areas of Xamarin Forms which are slow, but there's also areas of Xamarin Forms uh, which are fast. Um, and Xamarin Forms is easy, but easy is deceiving. So you're still on a, on a phone um, with limited resources. It's different to WPF. WPF um, was really forgiving. So if you had a WPF application, you can code it really badly, and it would still kind of work because you're, you're on a desktop. Whereas with Forms, you have to think you are on a device with, with uh, limited resources. So I like to think that Xamarin Forms is fast, but it's just not forgiving if you do things poorly. Uh, so what's fast? Uh, pages with less elements, um, the post layout translations and animations, which I'll go into a, a little bit later, um, leveraging the performance features. So a lot of people um, complained about performance, and Xamarin have done a lot of work. So if you actually listen to what they're saying and do what they say, then um, it'll actually make a bit of difference. Uh, and following the recommendations. Um, FF Image Loader, if you're doing Xamarin Forms, you have to be using FF Image Loader because um, Android has an issue where, well, not really an issue, but every time you get an image um, in Android and it loads it up, it turns it into a bitmap. So if you take a really large image and you load it up in Android, you're going to run out of memory pretty quickly. FF Image Loader will actually uh, resize the image. It'll also uh, cache it for you. Um, so overloaded pages um, with deep nesting, uh, they sort of slow Xamarin Forms page, or Xamarin Forms down. Um, the startup time, which Xamarin are trying to fix, um, there's really no solutions to this yet. Some people are sort of trying to come up with solutions, um, but there's always going to be like a, a two second sort of startup time uh, with Xamarin Forms, um, causing too many layout cycles um, and dynamically building your UI elements and ignoring uh, the recommendations provided by people. Um, so, how do we build fast apps with Xamarin Forms? Um, building a fast app is not always about uh, the platform. So I find a lot of people, they'll have like a big business application which has got a grid in it and they'll always want to try and put this grid on a mobile device or they'll just take this whole um, huge UI that's meant for a desktop and they'll try and put it on their mobile. But really, if you're building a mobile app, you need to go back um, and reinvent how your, your application UI works or rethink how your application UI um, works. And that's why you start off with UX design. Normally, we um, use low fidelity prototyping. so we iterate really fast on that. So we um, put together the, the low fidelity. We'll even build like a moving prototype, get people using it, um, get their feedback, and really rethink how the application is going to work. After we've iterated on the UX design, then we'll move over to the visual design. Uh, if you start with a vi good visual design, like this designed by a designer, uh, there's no reason you couldn't build this page in Xamarin Forms. It would be fine. Um, it's always going to look better if, it, if you start with a good visual design. 
Um, so fast is not always about the platform. It's, it's most of the time, it's usually how you code it. So most of the time we get hired to fix performance issues in Xamarin Forms. They've just coded it really poorly. So if you're doing data caching, so uh, keeping that data as close as you can um, to where, where the user is, so on the phone, um, basically caching as much data as you can on the phone. Uh, caching views, so if you've got a view, um, don't just throw it away and then create a new version of it. Just, just try and keep it around. Uh, image casing, which you can do with FF Image Loader. Uh, and you can do things in the background, download the data before the user is even going to request that data. Um, and then sequencing, sometimes you'll see people They'll not show the page, but they'll go and they'll start downloading stuff. And then once they've received the data, then they'll go and build their UI. Um, the problem with that is it actually means that you're wait, first waiting for the data and then building the UI. You can actually be doing two things at the same time. You can be downloading the data and have that UI built. And just when you get the data, just fill in um, the data underneath. Um, I'll just give you a little demo of that just to show you. Because so many people do it. I see it a lot. Um, just ignore how dirty my desktop is. <laughs> so I'm just going to, um, I've actually used uh, Fresh MVM and I've sort of played around with it a little bit to um, give a demo of this. So if we have a look in this constants, I've now sort of faked out caching. I mean, all that does underneath is that if caching is not enabled, it puts a little timer in because all the data is actually local. Um, but I haven't enabled caching in my app, so the, the data is not caching. Um, and then my page here in my contact page, sorry, my contact page model. What I'm actually doing is I'm taking a, a contact ID um, and downloading the, the contact, and then I'm assigning that um, contact here. So a lot of people actually do this. You might seem a little bit crazy um, if you've done a lot of Xamarin Forms. Um, but they'll wait for the data, and then once they get the data, then they'll uh, build their UI. So in this page here, I've got my, uh, on my binding context changed, I've got my data, and then I'm actually going through and I'm building out my UI. So let's just get rid of that. So this is the contact page. So let's see what happens when I go to the contact page. So just going into my contact page, selecting that contact, see a bit of a white screen, and then the data loads. So what if I did it differently? So this sequence is I'm downloading the data and then I'm building my UI. What if I did it where I'm downloading the data but I'm doing the UI at the same time? Um, I mean, it's quite easy in this sample because I've already did it the right way in the first place before I broke it. So now I've just got the, the page there, and the, and the page actually loads up before I um, even do the call to download the data. So now I don't need to dynamically do it. So I still have the data there. Oh, I don't have the data yet, but you can see, see when I go in and out, I see the UI straight away. And then it just fills in the data. So, I mean, a lot of people might say, well, of course you do it that way. But you'd be surprised at how many people don't actually um, think about this stuff when they're building an app. And the other thing I can do is I can enable caching in my app.
So obviously, actually implementing caching application is quite a um, harder thing than just doing a switch. You actually have to go and, and code it, um, but it's definitely worth uh, doing in your application. So I've got the data straight away, and you see the view straight away. So just a few pointers there. Uh, so I'm just going to go over some Xamarin Forms performance tips. These are the ones that uh, are already provided by Xamarin. Um, you probably know about them if you've already done a lot of Xamarin. Uh, use the uh, list view cell recycling, so that's an easy switch that you can switch on and get a good performance in Xamarin list views. Um, use the data template selector, so the data template selector allows you to have different data templates. So imagine you have a um, like a chat window. So on one side you have the incoming messages, on the other side you have the outgoing messages. So these views are totally different, but you still want to have these views that are totally different um, working in the list view without dynamically laying things out. So that's where you can actually, in this case, um, this is actually doing a, a message view. So you can see I've got the incoming template and the outgoing template. So what that does is when you enable it, it uh, it'll actually um, cache um, cache the views per the data template selector. So it's not actually um, changing a lot of the view, it's just changing the internal data um, when you're seeing those different views. Um, XAML compilation, um, up to five times faster. So simplifying your layout and reducing the nesting definitely um, makes a difference. So knowing your controls. So this person here is trying to get um, padding um, on their stack layout. But if they just known that um, the stack layout had padding and spacing, then they wouldn't have had to put in all those content views there. So they've actually expanded out an extra six uh, elements that they probably didn't need. So learn these Xamarin Forms controls and learn how to do them properly. Um, so avoid the relative layout. Um, the grid helps you reduce nesting and layout cycles. Um, don't put a list view inside a grid or a scroll view, um, use the header and footer of the list view. Um, so the list view generally should be your, uh, your top um, view. So, so you'll have a page, and then underneath that page, you'll have a list view. Uh, generally, you don't want to nest it in too much stuff. You can probably nest it inside a grid, but that's really about um, all you can do. Um, and don't use nested stack layouts when you can use a grid. Um, don't use a grid when you can use a stack layout. So if you've got a simple page, uh, and you just controls on top of each other, then you can just use those. Uh, and don't use a stack layout as a list view, which too many, too many people do that. Um, that. That's a recipe for disaster. Uh, and use the star and static widths on a grid. So all these, um, well, the majority of these are already sort of well documented. Um, uh, there was a talk at Xamarin Evolve by Jason Smith. He's, he went through all this and he went to, into it in, in real detail. Um, and prefer using the layout options .fill. So I was going to talk about the layout system, but I don't think I have time at all. So I'm just going to skip that. But I, I did a talk at Microsoft Ignite uh, last or earlier this year that went through the layout system. So if you're really interested, go and have a look at that talk. So I'm just going to jump all that stuff. So I'm just going to talk about um, post layout translations. So post layout translations happen after the layout system um, has gone through. So the layout system in Xamarin Forms is probably not the best layout system you've seen. They're working on improving it. Um, but the post layout translations animations actually happen post layout. So you actually don't uh, have any of the performance issues that come with uh, a Xamarin Forms uh, layout or a Xamarin Forms layout system. Um, so what I can actually do is rather than sort of going through it, I'll probably just uh, give you a demo. So this is me trying to recreate the, uh, the Facebook app in Xamarin Forms. So 
So here's the, the Facebook app or my um, version of it in Xamarin Forms. One of the unique things that the Facebook app, app does is when you're scrolling up or when you're scrolling down, sorry, uh, it hides the, um, the navigation bar. So that's what I've gone through and hit on the navigation bar. Another one that's um, pretty cool in um, the Facebook application is this, these little animations that c can slide up and out. Is that Lottie? Pardon? Is it Lottie? No. 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 Um, Lottie is only just there. And one other... Pardon? Yes. Yeah, it's already on GitHub. So I'm, I'm actually going to like do a blog post about it. I've uh, just been a bit busy lately, but this is this is part of um, some reforms as well. So, how many like um, custom renderers do you think I used in this? Uh, I can have a look, but let's see how many. I don't think I used many at all. No, it's I didn't have to do one for the header, so I can let's just go through them one at a time. <laughs> so. Going through the, let's have a look at this header. So the home wall page is the main page that we saw there. It virtually contains everything. Um, but in order to get that header working like this, I've, I was using the, the, the Xamarin forms like translations. So what they actually allow you to do is, after like the whole layout cycle has gone through, they allow you to modify the position of things, and you you virtually don't even see um, this happening. It just happens um, so quickly. So I've got this this grid up here. So the the whole thing is inside a grid, and then the top bar is just a custom control. Well, not a custom control, but um, a Xamarin Forms um, control. And then I've got a list view underneath it. So if we go through down here. So the first uh, part that we can see is I've got a grid. So it's got two rows in it. So the first, the top one is 80, so that's that bar at the top. Uh, and then we've got like a star, so that's taking up the rest of the screen. Um, inside the top one, on, I've got a header. So that's just a grid. So that whole um, header that we're looking at is just a grid. So just all vanilla Xamarin forms. So we didn't actually do anything except for um, put a few effects in. So the way that we actually get it to work is by using the, the translations. So we can see here we've got this um, advanced list view, uh, but as soon as it starts up, I change the Y to 60. So actually this is a little bit tricky because um, the list view is actually taking up the whole grid. So it's, it's spanning the two rows. Um, and then what I've actually done is I've moved it down 60 so you can actually see it. Uh, and then when I load the page up, <coughs> as I'm scrolling here, you can see that I've linked up to the scroll event. So if we actually have a look, um, so we've got my list view, and then we've got the, the scroll event. So I'm li linking up to that scroll event. And then inside that scroll event, I've got my header. So I'm translating the Y on that. So I'm um, basically, it's probably a little bit hard to explain this in detail. But what I'm doing is I'm taking in uh, the events um, from that scroll, and I'm basically just modifying the translation uh, Y on these two um, elements inside the grid. So that's what actually allows me to go through here and, and just move them without even like causing any layout cycles in the whole system. So another one we can actually have a look at is this little like button here. So you can see how that's animating from uh, the ground, or well, animating from behind uh, the like button there and then coming up. So if we just go and find that in the code, So you can see here, I've got a, um, a GIF image view. So it's just a GIF image view. Um, 
And then when I'm actually loading it up, I've set the opacity to zero. zero. Um, but if I actually look in the code behind here, when I, all I need to do when, when I actually click on that event, so let's just, we're debugging right now, aren't we? See if I can get it debugging. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this like button here. Oh. <laughs> Why is that not working? Anyway, so what it does is uh, each time I like click on it, um, all it does is, is does a translate, um, brings it up and down. So it's just changing the um, the translations on the applica on the um, on the, the various um, views. So this one, it's a like area. So that's this up here, which is the like area, which is containing this little GIF image view. Actually, there's another animation I've got in here somewhere. We can find it. Why do people upload, upload so many pictures of their kids? That's all they do on Facebook, isn't it? Where is it? There we go. So the animation. So this is all built with Xamarin Forms. Without Lottie? Without Lottie. Oh, where did it go? I lost it. Let's do it again. So this is all post uh, layout uh, translations. So we can actually even go in here. Just to prove that I'm not lying. You can see up the top here, it's Xamarin Forms. I'm just using Xamarin Forms, that's it. Um, oh, it's called an animation view, it's inside a grid. I've got my, um, my car, my house, everything that's animating. Um, not the nicest code, but if you go down here, you can actually see uh, this is where the animation is running. And I'm just using these methods like uh, fade to. Um, what else am I doing? Translate to, rotate to, fade to again. So um, I'll probably uh, open, well, this is already open source, but I'll do a blog post about it. So if anybody wants to build um, really good looking applications in them forms, you can actually do it. Um, you just need to sort of learn how the system actually works. So, uh, where this whole replica was easy to achieve? I mean, in iOS or in Android? Sorry? According to you, where you found that it's easy to replicate? On iOS part or on Android part? Are you talking about the Facebook application? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just done a, well, I've done it in Xamarin Form, so the same, it'll work in... Um, some, some custom renderers. No custom no. renderers. So, it, like, all those animations, everything is not custom renderers. So, like, when I hit that like button, that's not a custom renderer. I mean, there's a GIF image view in there, um, but I could put Lottie in there. So, but, like, all these, like, large animations here, like, that's not a custom renderer. That's just using the, like, translations built into Xamarin Forms. Because Xamarin Forms actually started out, I think, did you say that there was a history of it? Yeah. But it, there was, it was something like, um, part, it was two projects that were merged, and one of the projects was an animation library, and that's why Xamarin Forms has like this really slow like, layout system compared to this animation library that's like so much faster. And that's why if you use the animation areas of Xamarin Forms, then you can build a really fast application, um, and you're sort of skipping that whole layout cycle. So. Okay, so to say on Android as well, the experience is almost same. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, this is already open source, but I'll do a blog post about it and sort of go into detail of like, how everything's working. But, um, yeah, so I guess one thing to note is how you can actually do the translations. Where is it? Do the translations even in XAML before the view's la loaded. So you can actually like move things up and down off the screen like in a declarative way um, and sort of avoid the whole layout. So, so if you have to move something a little bit, you can use the translation to left, right, or whatever, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, what else did I have? I was going to talk about Xamarin Forms 
but it's getting late, isn't it? Um, I think the main thing to know about Xamarin Forms 3.0 is Xamarin are committed to making it fast. Well, the Xamarin Forms team are quitting, uh, committed to making it faster. So even though you can build like amazing apps already with Xamarin Forms, it's just going to get better. It's just going to get faster. So um, I'd bet on Xamarin Forms. And that's it. Alright. Yeah. 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 Yeah.